How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another preseason interview um, from the Elite Battle League with um, our friend, Lonely Hermit. J um, Josh, please go ahead and say hello. Hello. How are you doing today, my friend? Uh, doing pretty good. Pretty good. How you doing? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. My goodness. I'm sorry. Um, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Um, so... Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, we already got the first question out of the way. So before um, anything, to anybody else who uh, may have found you through the EBL, anybody new to your channel, you want to go ahead and give us a little bit of an intro as to who you are and what you do? Uh, well, this channel is primarily focused on Pokemon. Uh, right now, we currently have a black and white versus going on. By the time this comes out, I'm not sure if the other series I have planned has started yet. Uh, but we also have a Pokemon Y type block that is our solo series. The black and white versus is with Infernament. I should probably mention that. Who I'm doing it with. Um, so we got those two series going on. And then obviously we're going to have the EBL coming real, real soon to a channel near you. A.K.A. this one. Um, <laughs> as well as this month. Hopefully we'll have already started and be well into our EBL rewatch. That's going to be Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We're going to go through seasons one, two, and three in the lead up to season four's start. So keep an eye out for those streams. Uh, and follow me on Twitter at Hermeloni underscore. I think that's. Oh, follow, uh, subscribe to the EBL channel as well down below. And G. <laughs> Both of them. Subscribe. <laughs> all righty, guys. Um, all right. So if you're ready, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Do it. All righty. So what is going on through your head as we continue to get closer to the season? Oh, man. Um,. Man, it, for a second there, it was weird because I knew what my schedule was, but looking back on it again, like it was weird because I suddenly got very nervous for the season. <laughs> but suddenly got very <laughs> but I, you know, there was some planning and stuff like that. It's definitely called my nerves a lot, knowing you know I'm gonna have a plan at least heading into week one. I at least have my plan set for that. Uh, week two is where I'm, I'm very very scared but <laughs> regardless um I, a little i mean this nerves are still there obviously but there's a good amount of excitement uh, i'm excited to get started with the battles i'm excited to get into the weekly roundups i'm excited to do all that good stuff um so I, I, there's there's a lot of excitement with a nice little touch of nerves and butterflies in there oh butterflies <laughs> <laughs> all right that's good to hear that's good to hear um <clears throat> excuse me uh, are you feeling more or less confident heading into the season compared to uh, your last season that you uh, participated in? More. <laughs> more. Well, I, I was honestly like, the, the longer the season went on in, in season two, the more confident I got. I just had a huge lapse of judgment at the end, or I guess memory. Um, but I, I, I think I did well enough to prove that I can battle and i can make it to the final it's just up to me mostly but <laughs> i prove that I, I think more or less i can i can definitely be in the top half of the league at least um so that was a huge confidence boost i think i needed to get that first season out the way to, to feel more confident about my ability to battle nuzlocks really help as well um i won't lie they help with that sort of mentality of keeping pokemon alive and making the right switches and doing all that good stuff are they as difficult as competitive battling not really unless you're playing difficult games but you know it helped a lot so I, i'd say i'm definitely more confident heading into this season that's good that's good you heard it here for us uh folks play more nuzlocks yes i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> all righty uh so moving on here how are your preparations going so far i think you kind of touched briefly on this part but let's go ahead and uh discuss it a little further if you can how are your preparations going so far I mean, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, Luigi's the only one that uh, I've really prepped for at all. I mean, obviously, I've looked at the other teams, but I just kind of want to take it one week at a time for the most part. I'll do my de detailed breakdowns, but I really won't make a plan around the teams uh, until, you know, I'm done with the battle that comes before them. So in this case, I won't <laughs> prep for Bob until I'm done with Luigi. So um, I'm prepped for Luigi. I have a plan. Whether it'll work or not, I don't know, but I do have a plan for Luigi. Um... <laughs> And with all, you know, I, I did a lot of grinding throughout the summer as well. So, you know, that's not really a problem for me at all. Um, 
And I mean, yeah, I think I, I, I think they've gone pretty well. And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm ready for week one, so I don't think I can get much better than that, aside from prepping for the rest of the season, I guess. But yeah, I think it's, it's gone really well so far. There you go. I love that. I love that. I love how you're raring to go. I love it. Uh, looking at the team that you've drafted, and let's go ahead and uh, pull up your team here. Ah, uh, where be your team? Where is your team? <laughs> here it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> looking at your team, we got the Mewtwo, we got the Primarina, we got the Thunderous, the Excadrill, the Leafeon, the Duraludon, we got the Aerodactyl, Magmortar, and we have the Drapion. Um, uh, yeah, I lost my little, <laughs> I lost my little <laughs> place here. Um, based on looking at your team, how do you think your draft went? Um, well, it was no secret to everyone in the league that Rillaboom got sniped because I got yelled at because I had just woken up and I put my draft pick in without looking and I got yelled at. But um, it really wasn't that big a deal. I mean, my grass type pick was, I had, I had, I mean, we were just talking about this not too long ago. I, I had like 10 picks that I was perfectly okay with if I got any of them. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, uh, I got everyone else I wanted, to be honest. Uh, I did want Arcanine, but again, it was kind of a similar situation to the grass types where I was, I was, I was okay with using different fire types. Um, so I guess technically I got that Rillaboom and Arcanine, but it really didn't hurt at all because I had like 70 backup options for both of them, so I really didn't care too much. Other than that, everyone else uh, I got, so I'd say I'd say my draft went pretty well, to be honest. Okay. I kind of touched base uh, on the next question there. Uh, you did mention that some of your picks were sniped. Um, what Did that derail your plan for your original team? No. Um... I just wanted to have it as diverse a team as possible, so um, ultimately it was just, you know, I got sniped a grass type, so I'm gonna take another grass type. I got sniped a fire type, so I'm just gonna take another fire type. Like, it really didn't hurt my plan at all. Like I said, I think I got seven out of nine. Uh, I, yeah, I got seven out of nine from my original list, so that's really not that. It, my, my plan didn't get derailed really bad. Like, my core of the team is still there. I was happy. Like, my first four was like my core that I really wanted. I just wanted to use them and try them out. But other than that, I mean, with a couple of snipes, it really didn't hurt. Like I said, I just, I just found other Pokemon. Right. Okay. Now, looking at the final uh, draft for your team and everyone that uh, you've drafted, uh, how are you feeling about the team that you were able to draft? Really good. I actually really like my team. Like, the more I, I've studied them, the more I've, you know, uh, learned about them and, you know, some of the capabilities they have and not even just my biggest hitters like even the other ones that you might not really expect too much on a team um i'm even learning that some of them can still do a lot of work whether as a utility or support or even as an attacker like i think that's really fun um trying to experiment with all of them so i, I think I have, I have a pretty good diverse team and uh i feel pretty confident about this team i actually really like it to be honest probably i, I probably prefer this one over my season two team okay okay I like your team too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> now, are there any Pokemon on your team that might get MVP throughout the season, or any Pokemon that you feel the coaches might need to keep an eye out for? Um, if you feel like it's gonna give too much, you don't have to answer. I mean, I feel like uh, there's gonna be eyes on at least three of them. I mean, Mewtwo. It hasn't been in the league, maybe with reason. I don't know. I I haven't really seen a reason why it hasn't been in the league. Uh, Thunderous, obviously, I mean, my two legends are kind of a gimme. I feel like everyone would probably pick two legends, you know, as their strongest Pokemon. Um, so I've, I don't think I'm really giving too much away with those. Uh, and then Excadrill, I feel like that's also, weirdly, it's been a Pokemon that hasn't done too hot in the league, but um, I know Ooh. that's gotten mentioned um, mentioned a couple times when I've done these interviews. Uh, people bring up my Excadrill. Um, yeah, so I, I'd probably just say those three, nothing too in-depth about it, but... Uh, I won't deny that they are obviously hard hitters. Okay. Do you feel that there are any underrated Pokemon on your team? Um, well, like half my team hasn't even been in the league. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, the final three, four actually on my, oh no, Drapion has been in the league. But regardless, six through nine on my picks, uh, Duraludon, Aerodactyl, Magmortar, and Drapion. Um, haven't really seen too much light in the EBL. So I'm hoping to maybe 
kind of surprise people with what I can do with them. So I don't know, I guess. Basically, everyone on my team that hasn't been in the league before. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. M maybe except for Mewtwo, because I don't know if you'd count that as underrated. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, how confident are you in your ability to fully utilize your team to its max potential? Ooh, um, I seem like 80% confident right now. Um, okay. Lo looking okay. at... The, like I said, the more I study the team, the more I look at the team, the more I see the different ways I can use the team, how they actually gel pretty well together, which was my hope, my plan and my hope when I put the team together. Because uh, I, I, when I pick my draft picks, I don't go super in depth. I just kind of look on the surface. Um, so looking at them more and more and more in depth and learning more about them, the more they do kind of go hand in hand together. And it's actually a pretty solid team that gels well together, no matter what six I pick out of the nine. Um, so I, I, I definitely feel like I can, I can do some work with this team. Um, obviously this season's got some powerhouses across the league, so I don't know how well it'll stack up against all those teams, but, uh, I just kind of answered the next question, but <laughs> that's, uh, um, that's, uh, more or less, you know, how I'm feeling. I'm like an 80, 80%. Um, okay. Well, like you said, you kind of did already answer yeah. uh, the next question on, on here, on this list. Uh, so we can go ahead um, and bounce it unless you want to add something more to it. Well, yeah, the question was how well I think my team will stack up. Uh, it, I think it'll. I think I can take on any team in the league. Um, I, if go. I just use I my, yeah, if I just use my team correctly, I can take on anyone in the league. Um, again, I, these two kind of go head in hand for me because again, it comes down to my ability to make sure that the six I bring actually work and can combat the other team really well. So I, I think, I think I can stack up a consent. I like that. I like that. Now, <clears throat> moving back to the league, you are in the Johto division, the best division, which I'm sadly not in, <laughs> uh, alongside with, uh, the uh, I was gonna say the LA Inferno, but <laughs> um, alongside with the TJ Gengar and the DC Starmies, um, what were your thoughts when you saw who you were with? I was intrigued. Um, Ooh, okay. I have yet to face Luigi because he joined in season three, um, and then Timmy's obviously a newcomer, so he's kind of a wild card. We kind of picked up the t uh, Luigi and I kind of picked up the the wild card. Uh, player of the league, the potential dark horse. So that's going to be interesting. Thankfully, I don't really face him until later in the season, so I can learn more about him. Um, I don't have to face him early. Like some people, I think, actually, no, wait, no. I was going to say he gets Bob. He gets Pitch first. But he gets the rating champ first. So maybe I'll get to see what, what he, he's made of in that very first game. So um, I, I, I'd say I'm, I'm pretty excited. I don't think it's an easy, you know, two matches to have to, to put up with. But uh, I was definitely intrigued uh, in terms of how well I think I can perform against them. Because uh, again, I haven't faced either of them and I also haven't seen anything Timmy's done in terms of competitive. Mm. So yeah, um, I was definitely intrigued and uh, more excited, I would say too. Okay. Did seeing your schedule make you more excited for the season to start? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, excited might not be the word I'd use. Um, <laughs> so what do I got? I got Luigi, Bob, you, uh, Alan, and Timmy, which isn't not a pretty schedule. I'll be honest. Um, oh, I, you'll do fine. <laughs> uh, I, it, it made me more excited because I was like, oh, you know, the season's set in stone. You know, this is happening. But it, then it made me nervous because I got Bob week two, which isn't fun. Kind of wish it would have been a little bit later. And then, like I said, I get a couple, you know, I get the wild card and Timmy and haven't faced, I actually haven't faced anyone on my schedule um, at any point in EBL. So I am definitely a little nervous in that sense because uh, I don't know how well my battle style will match up against theirs. Um, but definitely nervous, but also I'd say simultaneously excited because it, it means like the, the season is actually happening. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, in terms of difficulty, how would you rate on a scale of one to ten? How would you rate your schedule in terms of difficulty? Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking anyone lightly. 11. I'm eleven out of ten. 
mostly Bob's on my schedule, so that already pushes it high up. I'm going to kind of steal that answer from your interview. Um, Bob definitely pushes that number up. Absolutely. But then to have to face you, like I said, Timmy's a wild card. Allen's been getting better. A lot of his matches last season weren't even like his losses last season weren't even bad. Um, they were all very pretty, pretty close. So he's definitely someone who I'm expecting to, to have gotten better this season. And then obviously there's Luigi, who's also another wild card, weirdly enough, weirdly enough, because he just he just is so different with his battle style. It's very unique. Um, so I mean, I'm just I'm not gonna underestimate anyone. Eleven out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, is there anyone that is not on your schedule that you would like to face? Mm. Uh, I feel like I could stomp Derek's team this time around, so I want some revenge there. Um, I won't see him in the championship more than likely, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I definitely want to run it back against Landon, uh, because that was definitely, I think, one of the better matches in the EBL in general was when we faced off. Um, so I definitely want to face him at some point as well, which is more likely. And then, you know, I mean, the more realistic goal to, uh, who I would face in the championship is probably Pidge. Or Bob. I'm already facing Bob, so I will go say Pidge because I want to take down the champ. Okay. <laughs> now, looking at the league, which teams are looking the most dangerous, not including your own? Uh, who isn't? <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, the obvious answer is everyone's been given, and I, I, I'm not saying this because, you know, I disagree or anything. I totally agree. It's Bob and Pidge. I mean, the two of them definitely proved that they had a lot of uh power last season you know in terms of how they battle and how they can they win they win matches like the way they win matches you know it's um very intense uh the way they battle i think personally no offense pidge i think you're right behind him but i think bob is the best battler in the league right now um with the team he has like he's just i don't know it's it's gonna be a pain for anyone including myself to face bob um, uh, Bob and Pidge are definitely like up there one and two, but honestly, uh, my division is pretty freaking stacked, or my conference is pretty freaking stacked. Um, but I probably point out Landon's team's pretty balanced. Uh, Timmy's team is is pretty balanced as well. Um, if I had to pick one for my division, I'd probably say Landon, and then I okay. probably I mean I'd say Bob, but Pidge is literally like right behind him. <laughs> for the other conference <clears throat> now on the flip side are there any teams you feel might be underestimated but would perform beyond the, uh, your uh, expectations so this is an interesting question for me because in my opinion this i don't mean this as like a, a diss or a slight or whatever timmy really has no expectations of him in my opinion like he we don't really know what to expect out of him. He's talking big game, so maybe that's, you know, that's the expectations we should set for him. Um, so, I, I mean, Timmy, we just don't really know what to expect of him exactly. So I don't know if I'd put him on, under this question, to be honest. Um, Cause yeah, I don't, I don't know what we should be expecting out of him. Um, but I mean, Nate having to join in halfway through the last season, uh, he's gonna get his own team. He hopefully is training more, so he learns more about you know battling and the games and stuff. You know Pokemon in general, because um, there's definitely a little bit left to be desired with his matches last season. But I think that comes with the growth and you know learning about all this good stuff. Um, Matt has an all bug team, so definitely not gonna. I, it's got good coverage, but not gonna expect you know a championship out of him. And then I'm not even. Uh, Derek, I guess. <laughs> you think he's got statistically the worst team in the league. So, I mean, I guess I don't know if he performed beyond expectations so, to be honest, with that team. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like the answer. I like it. Now, how do you think you're going to perform this season? I think I got a good chance of get, uh, getting a positive record. Um, okay. And maybe making a, a little run in the playoffs. I think I can repeat and make it back to semifinals. Um, I think that's doable. My conference doesn't have Bob or Pidge, so that means at least I have a, a decent chance at uh, making it past, you know, that semifinal this time around. Not not discrediting anyone in my conference, obviously. They all have great teams, but 
obviously those two guys are, are the favorites and they're not in my conference so um i think i got a good shot at making a run um and i think i got a good shot at at least going positive this season like a three two record or something along those lines uh, I, I think i'll perform well i mean i think i can do well this season okay now are there any specific goals that you might have for this season whether it's short term or whether they're long term um short term goals to win week one <laughs> just get off on the right foot um long term goal is to at least get back to where I was in season two and make it to the semifinal um other than that I mean I definitely want to try harder this season than I did season two you know that one it was a combination of time and just not committing as much as I probably should have uh into the season and um so I think I think definitely that's a big goal for me is to commit a little bit more, put a little bit more time into this, and actually try and take it more seriously, uh, and you know win. <laughs> <laughs> win, I like that. <laughs> okay, and now the final question to top the interview off: Why are you going to be the champion of the EBL at the end of the season? I think that kind of goes back to my last answer. I think I think if I am champion at the end of the season, I'll have put in the work. I'll have um, really tried my best to make sure I can beat uh, whoever I'm up against. Like I said, I, I do definitely think my team can stack up against anyone in the league. Uh, again, I just gotta you know be mindful of my six that I'm bringing and and what sets they have and all that good stuff. Um, but I think if I am champion at the end of the season, it will definitely be because I put in the work to, to get to that point and. Uh, I feel like I'll, ha hopefully, I'll feel like I'll have deserved it by that point. I like that. That's a good, honest answer. I like it. Now, <clears throat> with the interview out of the way, is there anything that you'd like to plug, like socials, any upcoming projects, merch, anything of that nature? Uh, yes. As mentioned earlier, we have uh, currently on this channel a Black and White versus with Inferno Men. Uh, it got off to a shaky start, but we're starting to pick it up uh, with the new episodes that are going to be coming out which I actually need to edit that. I just forgot. I just remembered that I have an episode coming out tomorrow and I haven't edited it. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And there's also the Y Tie blog, which is our solo series. Another series that is actually going quite well up until the most recent episode. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure what I'm putting this out, but the most recent episode to me didn't exactly go too hot, but it's a fun series regardless. The Y Tie blog, I'm having fun with it. Um, I return to solo content. And then potentially another series in the works. Again, I don't know if it'll have kicked off by the time this comes out, but uh, potentially another series in the works, so keep an eye out for that. And then the EBL rewatch that we're gonna be doing live Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, so be sure to not miss that. And follow, you know, where it's necessary, Twitter, Instagram, all that good stuff. And subscribe, please. <laughs> and subscribe to this guy too. <laughs> I don't know which way I'm gonna have you, but subscribe to this guy too. <laughs> he absolutely deserves it. I like I like I like your little answers. <laughs> your li your little answers where the, where you go. Subscribe, please. <laughs> uh, I, I I don't know. I, I find them funny, but um, if there's no other projects, there there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the preseason interview with the coach of the LA Inferno, of course, Lonely Hermit. Be sure to show some love his way alongside with all the other coaches in the Elite Battle League. Um, <clears throat> now, are there going to be any final words that you have for the fans? uh for your fans out there uh <laughs> i don't know why i froze um i'm gonna try my best this season we're gonna have fun with it at the same time we're also gonna try and be a little more competitive this season uh when it comes to our battles so hopefully we got big things coming our way with the ebl um and i'm gonna be pushing for that title i, I promise there we go love it now I do wish you the best of luck uh, on the season. Uh, we'll be seeing you real soon for the start of Season 4, which, again, is going to be September 3rd. Um, have a good rest of your day, my friend. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>